Okay, so welcome back to the second video on the sarco slash endoplasmic reticulum ATPase. So in this video, what we're going to do is um, we're going to have a look at how the sarco slash endoplasmic reticulum ATPase actually works in more detail. Right, so a nice way of, a nice cartoon for it is to just imagine it as a nice big square here. Yeah. We'll stick to that because it's nice and easy to draw. Whereas if you go on Google, you can type in circa, uh, circa rather, and you can get crystal structures, but they're very, very complicated. So we'll just stick with a nice square here. Okay, so the starting position, the position I want to start from, is a, a confirmation known as E1. Okay, so circa has lots of diff well, it has two main different conformations, and one of them is this one is known as E1, and E1 conformations are where the ions are held closer to uh, the cytosol than to the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. So remember, this is the phospholipid pi there that makes up the um, endoplasmic reticulum membrane here. So on this side is the cytoplasm, so this is this side here, and on this side is the endoplasmic reticulum or sarcoplasmic reticulum uh, lumen, basically. Okay, so when the protein is in its E1 state, that means that the ions are being held on the cytosolic side of this membrane, basically. So the protein is in the conformation where the ion binding sites are closer to the cytosol than to the uh, ER or SR lumen. And initially what it has is it has three protons bound to it. So these are protons. So what colour should I draw a proton in? Draw them in green. Okay, so here is the protons. So they're in green. Right, so we have three protons bound here. So these are protons. Hydrogen nuclei protons. Okay, right. So the initial thing that has to happen is that these protons have to now be displaced. And they're displaced by two calcium ions coming along. So here we will have two calcium ions coming along. And we'll draw calcium ions in orange. Okay, so the calcium ions are going to displace uh, the uh, protons. And basically what that does is it changes uh, the name of this protein. So you, you, the protons are going to go off and they're going to be released into the cytoplasm. And now what you have is you have two... Uh, calcium ions bound to the cytosolic side of this protein. Okay, so here they are. Here are our calcium ions, like so. Okay, and now that that structure there is now called E1 uh, and then 2Ca2+, to denote that uh, two calciums are bound to it, basically. Now, I personally do not understand why this isn't called E1 free H+, but it just, for some reason, isn't conventional. You just write E1, and then it's got the protons, and you would just assume they're there, basically. Okay, so E1 with two calciums, and now what happens is that an ATP molecule needs to come along. So I should draw the ATP molecule here. In fact, shall we actually draw its structure? I'll label it here. So this is the label. But let's, let's give it a nice, all right, um, well, let's give it its actual structure. So here's ATP, here's the ribose sugar, uh, here's the adenine organic base coming off, and then we've got three phosphate groups, adenosine triphosphate, here it is. Right, so adenosine triphosphate comes along, and it's basically going to bind to this protein. So I, I won't draw this because it looks complicated, but I'll just draw it binding like so. So here is our ATP molecule binding here. Okay, right. So uh, what you now get is you um, get another intermediate, so I'll draw that in, which is this ATP molecule actually bound to uh, the uh, circa, which has uh, these two calciums bound uh, on its cytosolic side as well. So this is ATP. Uh, you have two calciums here. I'll just colour those in. Here are the two calciums. I should label them as well, actually. So these are calcium ions. Calcium. Okay, right. And um, this um, is now called E1. And then you put ATP is considered some, for some reason more important than the calcium, so it comes first. So this is called the E1 ATP2 calciums, basically. Okay, right. Now what happens is that the ATP is going to be hydrolyzed, and it's going to be hydrolyzed to ADP. 
So ADP is going to go off, but the third phosphate group, this phosphate group here, is going to remain bound to the protein, and it remains bound to an aspartate residue on the protein. So basically what you're going to get is you're going to get the protein here. So here is circa sitting in the membrane again, and I'll try and give it a bit more cytosolic side than I did in this picture. Um, and here now, it's got just a phosphate group attached there, so I'll put P there. Okay, so it's got this phosphate group attached, and ADP has basically gone off and is now doing its own thing. It's no longer important in our, in, as far as we're concerned. So ADP's gone off. Okay, and this intermediate is then known as the E1P uh, 2CA2+. Uh, okay, so E1P 2CA2+. So that's the intermediate denoting that you're still in this E1 conformation, which means that the ions are being held closer to the cytosolic side than the uh, endoplasmic reticular luminal side. Um, but it's now uh, got this phosphate, so you put the P there, E1P, and you've still got two calciums bound. Now what happens is that that phosphate triggers a conformational change, basically. It triggers a change in the structure of this protein that basically makes it flip where the ion binding sites are. So the ion binding sites are going to move, and they're going to move downwards. They're going to move closer to the endoplasmic uh, reticulum luminal side, basically. Uh, so what you're going to get is, let me show you this. It's going to transform like so, and I'm not going to have enough space for I draw it here, but never mind. Okay, so here is our protein sitting in the membrane again. So this is the circa protein sitting here. And now it has the two calcium ions by, um, bound to ligand binding sites, which are closer to the um, uh, endoplasmic reticulum lumen than, um, than the um, cytosol. And don't get it me wrong, the, they haven't moved, uh, they've not changed their binding sites. What's happened is the whole binding site has moved. It's moved down here because of this phosphate group. That's very important. I keep that phosphate group drawn on there. So now that the uh, ligand binding sites are closer to the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, it's now said to be in the E2 conformation. So you've got E2 with the phosphate group still bound, and you've now got two calciums. Okay, so now what's going to happen is that free protons are going to come in, and in this conformation, in this E2 conformation, the protein prefers to be bound to protons than to calcium. So in the E1 conformation, the protein preferred to be bound to calcium than protons, so it readily um, had the protons displaced by the calcium. Whereas now, what's going to happen is that uh, the protein is going to prefer to be bound to protons than uh, calcium ions. Okay, so uh, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.